Hello, welcome to Swiss Watch Can, welcome to another show. Every week we try to show you watches which you haven't seen before, or maybe you know you discover a new world. Today's topic is no different. I'm not alone on the set today, as you see in the effect studio. I'm here with my friend Boris Pjanic from Cologne, Germany. We're gonna look at a very special project he had the privilege to develop with his client. And we're gonna show you a watch which you probably never seen before, definitely not in this configuration. Boris, welcome to Zurich and welcome to the show. Nice Thank you to for have having you. me. So Boris, tell our audience who you are, what you do and why are we here today? I started in 1998 to um, uh, search for vintage watches. Um, it was something that always stayed in my heart and in uh, 1998 I was living in Chicago and went on eBay and it was a totally different time. I bet. You could just buy anything and you had no idea what you did. but there wasn't as much problems in the time. So I went um, and bought some early Rolexes, some early uh, Speedmasters, and that got me into the whole hobby. And uh, that at some point triggered me to say, wow, um, why not go and widen the scope of my business, going over from vintage to independent watchmaking, curate special pieces, unique pieces, do things for uh, people that want something they cannot get somewhere else. They can't go to a jeweler and say, hey, listen, I want this and that, and please make me a dial from with somewhere else. And, and this is uh, the world that has been opening up in um, the recent years for me. And it's a very interesting world. Yeah, I bet. I mean, the watch we have today is no exception to that rule. Today is going to be a Moritz and Grossmann with a very special dial, correct? Yes, yes. We have a watch here that is nothing like you've seen before. Moritz Grossmann resides in Glashütte in Germany. Yeah. Glashütte nowadays is considered together with Dresden to be the hub of German watchmaking. Mm -hmm. uh, Moritz Grossmann was founded in 2008 mm -hmm. by one of the very few lady watchmakers, Christine Hutter. Yeah. And she built the factory over there and is making, I don't know, a few hundred pieces a year. Um, most pieces, from what I hear talking to her, are unique pieces. People are uh, increasingly asking for watches that are not your general pieces. So before we dig into the piece, I want to do like a quick wrist check. So which watch you're wearing today? It's maybe something my viewers saw already. Yes, they did. <laughs> you featured it a few weeks ago yes, in your exactly. video. Um, so uh, this is a bronze case. It was two, 10 pieces uh, that we made. I created this together with uh, Dornblut in Germany and a good friend of mine who runs a forum in Germany called Vintage Time. Awesome. No, I love this watch. I reviewed it exactly like you said. You were kind enough to lend it to me for the review. My audience liked it a lot. Again, I think it's a great uh, value proposition for this uh, price point. On my wrist, I have the Jacob & Co Epic X. It's a watch I have, I think, since two years now. Skeleton, very light to wear, so it's perfect for the summer, also with the rubber strap. So again, we have a different world, so it, it's cool to combine these two worlds today on the show. Tell us also something that many viewers probably, you know, think about and, you know, ask themselves is how did this watch come to be? How did you, you know, who had the idea and how did you guys develop it? It actually is a funny story. Um, I helped somebody who I was speaking to um, online for quite a while uh, to get his watch from a well-known Swiss watchmaker and um, he went to a jeweler and asked them to uh, create a unique piece for him and they rejected him. So I said, well, I know the watchmaker, let me help him. Um, it's a better known factory and, and a bigger factory so they wouldn't work with me and that's okay. So I helped yeah. my client create his unique piece. He got it already, he's super happy and he said, Boris, this is a real shame. You couldn't get paid, but you did the work. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Yeah. Um, he actually received the watch from the hands of the same jeweler that rejected him. Yeah. So the world is funny, um, but this led to more pieces. He already got a watch from a German manufacturer. Um, and um, this is the second piece that we have been working on now together, or actually the third, if you consider the very first one. And he said, I want something um, that is very unique, that nobody really has. Um, and I want something um, that's maybe a mix of two worlds. Uh, in this case, we have Germany and Switzerland. Mm -hmm. So this brought me to this watch. Initially, we were looking at the regular hand-wound piece. That was not special enough. 
And then I said, you know, there is an amazing piece. It's a, it's a hamatic. Yeah. It's something that nobody else in the world has. It goes back to designs originally created by Perele and later adopted by Breguet. And um, Christine Hutter created this movement here. It took about two and a half years and they ran into major roadblocks. It wouldn't work initially and it had problems uh, with a rotor that was hitting sure. the left and right too hard and wasn't winding it well enough and not charging the power reserve. At some point they finally figured it out. So we created a piece here together with Moritz Grossmann uh, who makes the watch and the movement and Kari Wutilainen who uh, I asked to create the dial. Wow. The client, he is very enamored with uh, Kari Wutilainen and his watches. He wanted something that's handmade, that is a true piece of art. And so that's how we got to the point where he said, well, I want a Guyoshi dial, but I want a real Guyoshi dial. I don't want a print mm -hmm. and I want it by the best. And the best is obviously Kari Wutilainen. There's no doubt about it yes. anywhere in the world. And this is how we got to this watch um, and especially this dial. As we started with the first suggestions by Kari and our first ideas and we were bouncing off ideas and talking through the night since he's in the US and I'm in Germany, we came into plenty of roadblocks and one of them was my client is obsessed not having cut off uh, index bars or index numbers and he's not the only one there are plenty of them out there and i understand that so we had to figure out like what can we do like we can't have index bars we can't have index numbers and that's what got us to these points that we have as you can see mm -hmm. here beautiful um, green points huh? yeah there's four green points at the quarters and um, this was the solution Nothing's cut off. Um, <laughs> then the green small second is actually the result of a plant that he has growing in his uh, garden. It's called Markworth uh, or Markworth. It's a, a, a plant I, I, I wasn't familiar with it. Yeah. So this is where we came from. We went through all these discussions and Kari finally suggested us like a handful of uh, um, dial proposals and one of them had this amazing, mesmerizing guyoshi. It's, it's something I haven't really seen previously from Kari. This kind of guyoshi is not only mesmerizing, it feels like a little bit, you know, in French they say trompe de l'oeil. You know, there's like paintings out there where you see stairs, but they lead somewhere where they can't lead to or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. So it's really cheating your it's eye. It's like an optical illusion. Oh, so like an speak. optical illusion, yeah. yes. And then you have like, where it gets stronger and weaker and in some areas it feels like it's kind of faded, mm -hmm. um, it's not clear. So this is absolutely an amazing uh, Guyoshe dial. I have never seen anything yeah, like this. Me neither. What are the hands made out of? The hands are steel hands. Mm -hmm. um, they weren't um, matching uh, this dial anymore because they were too short. Yeah. And so they had to be created in a little longer version, especially the minute hand, wow. to hit actually exactly the points in the surrounding perimeter. Um, otherwise they would have been really ridiculously short. Moritz Grossmann accommodated all our wishes and uh, so did Kari. And this is how we have a beautiful timepiece now that's absolutely unique in the world. And I see the finishing is also exquisitely made. Yes. The hands it took a, take a long time to create, I yeah. assume? Actually, the handset you see here, three hands, takes about eight hours. Wow. One person sits there, eight hours of polishing. It's wow. obsessive. Yes, to say the least. <laughs> yes, to say the least, absolutely. We saw the dial, which is exceptionally made by the, the, the master of dials himself, Mr. Butilainen. But this watch also has another side to it, which uh, I think is also very mention worthy and just exceptionally made. So tell us something about the movement of this watch. This is a unique movement which hasn't made by anybody else in a wristwatch yet. Um, a few years ago Maurice Grossman started developing this and um, they created this hammer uh, pendulum style uh, automatic winding mechanism. It was very challenging in the beginning and uh, after they have fi uh, figured out all their issues and, and solved their problems, they came up with a beautiful movement. This is absolutely amazing. We discussed earlier that it was made originally a similar design by Perelet and later on picked on by Abraham-Louis Breguet, who 
sold about 80 to 90 pocket watches with a similar movement. This is still completely different and you adjust it to a wristwatch, no comparison. A movement consists of 324 parts, which is more equal to a complicated watch or a chronograph. Um, it's uh, really very complex. You see amazing finishing on all the parts. You have a German silver um, and a steel hammer. The hammer swings kind of in a in a, in a rail and, and a small movement of this hammer already um, helps to charge the watch significantly. And so it actually takes only six hours to charge the watch fully with moderate movement. So you can work in your office, have the watch on your wrist. After six hours, it's fully wind. The power reserve is 72 hours. Mm -hmm. So that's quite a significant power reserve. Um, and um, this is a movement we haven't seen anywhere else. Um, it is really kudos to Christine Hutter. And so also I see a typical German style of finishing and materials used here. So what are some of these similarities maybe the viewers also know from other German brands? Yeah, German silver, you have hand engraved balance cock, um, you have uh, the striped finishing, which is similar to Geneva striping. Um, it's just really very complex. Um, you have a very fine anglage in this mm -hmm. uh, watch. Moritz Grossmann doesn't do the wide anglage um, as far as I could see with their watches so far, uh, but it looks very beautiful and you only see it really on high resolution pictures. We'll, we'll definitely provide those. Uh, yeah. And also see the little springs which uh, stop the detent yeah. are also hand polished, which yes. is just incredible. Yes. And they're made in steel, I think. Yeah, yeah, I think so. And um, yeah, Moritz Grossmann is obsessed with hand finishing. Yeah. I mean, um, I saw how they work in their factory and their employees are really, the watchmakers are unbelievable. There's a lot of small details with this movement. Can I take a closer look? Absolutely. Wow, it, it, it's a pleasure to have this in my hands. Again, I, I never saw a finished product, which is extremely cool. And the way this weight moves up and down is super cool. I also see the weight has a gold like uh, circle at the end, it probably helps the winding mass, so it has a bit more weight to it. Mm -hmm. What's also nice is to see uh, there's a lot of black polishing going on on the, on the movement as well, and the screws are heated blue. Yes, right? they are. Yes. And what's also very special or maybe focused on German watchmaking is the clear sapphires here, which I don't think anybody else uses. No. Usually it's... they use uh, rubies, correct? That's right. Uh... Christine Hutter, she is using uh, white sapphires on her movements throughout all her watches. Very cool. Mm -hmm. And they are held into with these like screwed in gold chatons, Absolutely. which again is something people know from German watchmaking of the highest level. What I'm very curious to know as well is, you know, as, as a smaller collector, how long does it take for a project like this, you know, to, to take place and to develop? We started around um, March uh, this year mm -hmm. and it actually unfolded pretty quickly. Um, the watch was just delivered uh, about a week ago. Wow. I went to see Moritz Grossmann to pick it up. Um, during this COVID time, shipping is not exactly a pleasure. Yeah. Um, and I tried to avoid at least one piece of shipping. Obviously, the watch has to go to the collector and that is at the moment my headache. <laughs> uh, in normal times, I would hand deliver the watch and fly to the US. So yeah, in that sense, I would like to thank the uh, collector because he allowed me to take this piece to show it to you. This was definitely, not everybody will do it. Many yes, collectors will be worried with such a piece that we scratch it or something. I have treated it with utmost care, as you can see and um, I'm looking forward to send it to him very soon. Awesome, I'm sure he's, uh, he can't wait to finally see it in person after months of development and thinking and renderings and sketches. It, this is a beautiful combination of two amazing watchmakers. Yes, I mean this dial with that movement, which is exceptional, piece unique you know, yeah. in, in its purest form. Absolutely. The last thing we haven't spoken about is uh, the case and the price of this watch. Can you tell us something about that? Yes, absolutely. Um, the case is made of white gold. Mm -hmm. There's also a rose gold hematic out there. The case size is 41 millimeters, so really comfortable um, for a dress watch in today's time, 40, 41 millimeter, 39 millimeter. That's kind of what people mostly seek in an uh, elegant watch. The price of the regular model 
is around 46,000 euros, including German VIT. This model here was about 60,000 euros. Because of the attention to detail extra and also the beautiful dial, yeah. which comes at a cost, which yeah. makes absolute sense. So Boris, at this point, we would now usually put the watch on my beautiful wrist. I have seen your <laughs> videos in the past and I know you would love to. Uh, and so would I. I have shot the watch without wrist shots yes. to show them to my client. And I want to keep it that way so Absolutely. we don't touch the watch with our skin. I just want to send it in Absolutely. perfect condition. I am already very thankful to the collector that he even gave us the chance to have it on the channel and uh, also thankful to you that you drove all the way to you know show it to me and also to my audience that was it for the review guys again if you have any questions about this watch for me or boris leave a comment down below also follow boris on his social media accounts you can go to instagram watches and art and exactly. youtube channel where he has over 300 videos of exceptional watches you just type in watchesandart.com and also his website with the same name. I'm gonna put all the links in the description so you can find it much easier. And yeah, Boris, thank you for coming and for giving us this opportunity. It was a real pleasure to see you again. My and pleasure. I hope we'll do this something like this in the future as well. We will. This was a first, not the last. Not the last, I'm, I hope so as well. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next week.